don't have this mythology that we have a greatly expanded federal spending over the last 10 years, which, or even over the last three years, which is simply not the case. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those in favor, those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Thank gentleman chair. from Georgia. I request recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 74, line 17. Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity, $72,904,000. The gentleman from Georgia seeks recognition. Yes, ma'am. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia. Page 74, line 19, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $304,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $304,000. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Again, I rise just to freeze the fundings for salaries and office expenses for the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity by a meager $304,000. If we cannot cut out $115,000 or $304,000, what are we going to cut? And as my friend from Massachusetts already said, actually on two of my amendments, that is to increase salaries of federal bureaucrats. We've got to freeze the salaries of these bureaucrats. We've got to be fiscally responsible. My amendment doesn't cut any program does it cut any service? Does it cut out any part of the necessary aspects of the federal government? All it does is it freezes the salaries and expenses of this office as the other, as the other amendments would do so. It freezes it at this year's levels. Doesn't even go backwards. Freezes it at this year's levels. I heard support of my amendment, now yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts seek recognition? Um, I uh, seek to. Uh, the gentleman is recognized. I'm in opposition. Well, Madam Chairman, now at this point, we have. I think this is the last of this group of amendments that are have been proposed in this area, in essence. And when you put them together, when you put them together. It, it, because one was for uh, six and a half million, one was for about five million dollars, and there were a couple that were uh, a little, it was one of those a little over a million, and then a couple that were smaller. The sum total of, uh, of people who will be taken out of the, uh, who this would require the freeze in that way, it would require that, uh, that some number around. 200 or so employees would be put out of positions. Now, the gentleman from Georgia thinks that, well, they're federal bureaucrats, but they're providing a service. In this instance, it is the service as the, uh, in the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity, which has a budget, a total budget of $70 million or so. And, uh, and this 300,000 is only a couple of percent out of it. Most of, the most of the salaries and expenses, most of these agencies that he has been affecting are mostly done in salaries and, and uh, expenses of the operation of the office. But they all provide a public service to people. In this instance, it's the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity. Well, it ensures that Americans have the same right, that all Americans have the same right to housing and investigates instances where those rights have been violated. So we are in every instance of them, uh, and we dealt with a couple of similar ones last night before in the, uh, in the other department under this bill, they only serve to slow down the effective operation of those offices to provide services across the whole, the whole gamut of things which have been 
given to them to do, whether it be public housing, whether it be the uh, Veterans Administration program, here the Fair Housing Administration program, the FHA, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, housing for elders, housing for disabled people, all of them are the same ilk. There is no reason to do anything other than the same thing uh, that we have done in the past, and so I'm urging again a no vote on this and, uh, and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Iowa is recognized. I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. I, I thank Madam Chairwoman, and uh, I understand that the gentleman, uh, and I appreciate the fact that he wants to cut spending. We have, in fact, in this bill, cut the spending from the request uh, $1.4 million on this particular uh, line item in the budget. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, Madam Chairwoman, uh, we have additional rent that we have to pay. We have an extra day of work for the federal workers next year that we have to pay. So there's not going to be any increase. It's basically going to maintain uh, where we are in this, this function. But again, I, uh, we have already cut from the President's request $1.4 million, and there are additional costs we're going to incur just to stay even uh, from last year. So with that, uh, I would urge a no vote, and I yield back to Bell. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. Madam the chair, amendment is not agreed to. The gentleman from I Georgia. I request a recorded vote. The pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 74, line 20. Office of Healthy Homes and Lead Hazard Control, $6,816,000. Public and Indian Housing. Tenant-based rental assistance, $15,134,283,000. The gentleman uh, from uh, New York seeks uh, recognition for what uh, purpose? Madam Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Will the gentleman specify which uh, Nadler amendment is? I only have one at the desk. Oh, okay. Okay. Amendment number Unless three. Unless it's the one we dealt with last night. That's the only other one I gave The in. clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number three, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. Nadler of New York. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Oh, the, the, for what purpose is the gentleman from Iowa? Uh, seek Madam Chairman, I, I reserve a point of order on the gentleman's amendment. The point of order is reserved. The gentleman from New York will strike the last one. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> well, we spend a lot of time talking about how we need to do more with less. The reality is that all too often we do less with less. This is the unfortunate reality facing our rental assistance programs if the House proposed funding levels are enacted. The Housing Choice Voucher Program, more commonly known as Section 8, provides rental assistance to over 2 million households with very low incomes. Half of these households are seniors or people with disabilities. Most of the rest are families with children. Experts agree with HUD's assessment of Section 8. It is a cost-effective means of delivering decent, safe, and affordable housing to low-income families in the private market. Because of the widely accepted success of the program, Section 8 has enjoyed bipartisan support for many years. Despite agreement among policy experts and politicians, Section 8 funding levels continue to come up short of the actual need. The National Low Income Housing Coalition found that according to the latest census data, for every 100 households with extremely low incomes, only 30 rental units are affordable and available. Three quarters of renters with extremely low incomes pay housing costs that exceed half their incomes, placing them at high risk of housing instability and homelessness. Yet because of limited funds, only one in four eligible families receives rental assistance. Without increasing funds beyond what is included in this bill, for the Section 8 program, an estimated 58,000 low-income families will lose their rental assistance next year, their existing rental assistance, putting these families at risk of homelessness. Even the more conservative estimate of the Section 8 budget shortfall by the OMB finds that 30,000 low-income families will be at risk of losing their 
current vouchers and therefore of losing their homes. And with housing instability and homelessness comes the destabilizing of families and possible long-term negative impacts on kids. That's why I'm offering this amendment. This amendment would increase funding for Section 8 voucher renewals by $460 million to cover the actual cost of ensuring that existing vouchers will continue and that no family will lose an existing Section 8 voucher. This does not increase the number of vouchers, though I would love to do that, but it does ensure that no family would lose their currently existing Section 8 voucher. Additionally, by funding Section 8 at the figures necessary to continue existing vouchers, we can make sure that it would be unnecessary for HUD to implement its, proposed, its proposal for a $75 minimum rent, even if that $75 exceeds the normal Section 8 rental limit of 30% of income. To most of us here, $75 may not seem like a lot of money. It's a meal for two in many Washington and New York City restaurants. But for 500,000 of the poorest HUD-assisted families, families who have annual incomes of less than $3,000, that's around $250 a month, $75 is a lot of money. For 400,000 HUD-assisted families, $75 minimum would be a 50% rent increase from what they're paying now leaving these families with less money for food, transportation, and other basic necessities. And we're talking about families with annual incomes of $2,000 or $2,500 annually. Mr. S Madam Speaker, our first objective must be to prevent further hardship to the poorest people in our country and to prevent additional potential homelessness among vulnerable low-income families. To do this, we must ensure that we do not lose current Section 8 assistance, that we do not impose a new, minimum that could be way, a new minimum rent that could be way beyond 30% of income for people earning $2,000 and $2,500. And that, this ne amendment is necessary to do that. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment. I thank you, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, the amendment proposes a net increase in budget authority in the bill. The amendment is not in order under yes, Section 3J3 of House Resolution 5, the 112th Congress, which states it shall not be in order to consider an amendment to a general appropriations bill proposing a net increase in budget authority in the bill unless considered in block uh, with another amendment or amendments proposing an equal or greater decrease in such budget authority pursuant to Clause 2F of Rule 21. The amendment proposes a net increase in budget authority in the bill in violation of such uh, section and I would ask for a ruling of the chair. Does any member wish to be heard on the point of order? The gentleman from New York is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the, the necessity for this amendment is undeniable. The hardship and the suffering this budget would cause without this amendment by imposing minimum rentals way beyond 30% of income on people with incomes of $2,000-$2,500 annually is undeniable. That this Congress should do such a thing is regrettable, to put it mildly. I understand the rule. The rule would require an offset of an equal amount of money. But in this overly restrictive bill to, to start with, there is no way of finding such an overly such an offset of that amount of money without hurting people in equal amounts in, other, in equal fashion in other ways. So that, that says that we have a choice of really injuring these people or really injuring those people. That's not an acceptable choice. I understand the rule. It is, that is regrettable. I hope that as we progress with, the, uh, with this budget that we can find a way of finding the funds that we have in this amendment for this purpose so that we do not injure all these thousands and thousands of very low-income people. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Iowa makes a point of order that the amendment offered by the gentleman from New York violates Section 3J3 of House Resolution 5. Sex Section 3J3 establishes a point of order against an amendment proposing a net increase in the budget authority in the pending bill. The chair has been persuasively guided by an estimate from the chair of the Committee on the Budget that the amendment proposes a net increase in budget authority in the bill. Therefore, the point of order is sustained. The amendment is not in order.
The clerk will read. Page 83, line 17. Housing certificate fund on obligated balances including recaptures remaining from funds appropriated to the department may be used for renewal of or amendments to Section 8 project-based contracts. Public Housing Capital Fund, $1,985,000,000. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Will the gentleman specify which amendment? Will the gentleman specify which amendment he is referring to? I have it as amendment number 160. I think that's the designation. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 84, line 19, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $110 million. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $110 million. The gentleman is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The underlying bill is suggesting that Congress allot an increase of $110 million in federal funding for the Public Housing Capital Fund from this fiscal year, from fiscal year 2012. My amendment would simply freeze funding at our current level and reduce the proposed funding by $110 million. We've got to stop spending. That's what all my efforts are geared towards. We can continue to give necessary function of the federal government to those who need it. My amendment would just freeze the increase, proposed increase in funding. We keep it at this current year level, and I urge my colleagues to support this very simple amendment that would save over $110 million for the hardworking taxpayers of America. Now I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, I, I, um, I um, claim time in opposition. The to gentleman the is recognized. Uh, the amendment that the gentleman from Georgia has now offered has to do with the public uh, housing capital fund, and uh, and the. the uh, and I rise in strong opposition to this amendment. The public infra housing infrastructure currently has a, an estimated $26 billion of maintenance backlog. In fact, capital repairs accumulate at the rate of, uh, of something over $3 billion a year which is considerably higher than $1.9 billion that is contained in this uh, $1.985 billion that's contained in this bill. So what we are doing is year by year continuing to provide uh, uh, maintenance funding, capital, the, the, the uh, uh, replacement of, of uh, utilities, the replacement of appliances, and uh, such simple maintenance as a painting, if it's needed, and so on, uh, in our more than a million housing facilities, housing units, in the uh, 3,500 or so of our total um, housing authorities around the country, we are putting steadily these in a situation where we're building a further capital maintenance uh, backlog gap year by year by year. So, um, so this, is, it, this is never a wise thing to do when it's at the extent that we are presently doing it, but the $110 million at least is a little bit better than ha not having the $110 million, which would be an even greater increase in the uh, backlog in, uh, gap that we have for maintenance and repair and upgrading of our, our housing units. All of those housing units are intended to last for many years and be used long into the future. And if we don't maintain them properly in a reasonable way, then 
then eventually we will lose those units and it is much more expensive to replace the units with new units than it is to, to maintain them in a proper way. So I uh, urge a no vote on this amendment uh, so that we do not continue to dig our hole deeper on the maintenance needs for the stock of housing that we have in our 3,500 public housing authorities around the country. I yield back the balance of my time. He yields back the balance of his time. For what purpose does the uh, gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? Madam Chairwoman, I move to strike the last words. The gentleman is recognized. <coughs> Madam Chairwoman, I rise in support of this amendment. This is a $110 million increase in spending and is simply too much under the uh, circumstances. I want to say, uh, and first of all, though, that I certainly want to commend uh, Chairman Latham and all those who have worked on this bill because of uh, the, ma the material that's been provided to our office uh, said that this bill overall contains a 7.1 percent decrease in funding, which I think is the biggest cut uh, of any appropriations bill that we've dealt with so far. But I also want to commend and salute the uh, gentleman from Georgia for trying even harder to uh, rein in spending, because I think uh, almost everyone on both sides of the aisle know that we have to reduce spending and we have to do more than we've been doing. This $110 million increase is double the rate of inflation. Uh, the amendment uh, by the gentleman from Georgia does not reduce uh, the funding of this uh, agency. It just holds it at the same level. We've cut our own budgets, uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, for the last couple of years. We've tried to cut uh, many other things. But mega billions have been poured into this program over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. Even with the gentleman's amendment, uh, this uh, fund will still get uh, $1,765,000,000. And I can tell you, most people around the country think that's an awful lot of money. And I can tell you that uh, I rise in support of this amendment. I certainly hope that if this amendment uh, does not pass, that we will at least uh, uh, pass the much smaller cut in the uh, gentleman's uh, next amendment. But I think this is a good amendment. We have to get serious about cutting spending when we're facing a national debt of over $16 trillion going much higher, much faster. And unless we want this country to become a gigantic Greece and have the problems that we're seeing all over the world, then we've got to do more than we're doing. And so I rise in support of the gentleman's amendment, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? I would move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. I, I thank uh, Madam Chair. Chairman, uh, I rise in opposition to the amendment. Uh, we have been fiscally responsible in this bill by reducing the public housing capital fund by $85 million below the budget request. And we're hearing that uh, this funding level will be a challenge because there's a backlog, uh, Madam Chairman, of over $25 billion in capital projects. Uh, however, this does represent one of the toughest choices we've had to make uh, to meet our allocation in this bill. Uh, a deeper cut to this account will merely defer projects to future years and uh, I believe will cost more money in the future by running up the costs in those projects in the, in the years ahead. Uh, with that, uh, I would urge a no vote and I yield back the balance of The gentleman time. yields back the balance of his time. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman uh, from uh, Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. <clears throat> the amendment is not agreed to. Gentleman from Georgia. Madam Chairman, I as for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The Madam clerk Chair. will read. Madam Chair. For Madam what Chair. purpose does the gentleman from Georgia rise? I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Chairman, I was going to introduce another amendment to this same program, which would have been a decrease of just 10 percent of the increase. And as I see things going on here, Today, we can't even cut out $115,000. Cutting out $11 million, I'm sure, is out of the question by my colleagues. Madam Chair, we've just got to stop the spending that's outrageous here in Washington. So I'm not going to offer the other one. I'm 
would uh, anticipate a point of order being brought against it, and rightfully so. So I'm not going to, produce, uh, to introduce that amendment, but I just ask that my colleagues, and, and I hope that they hear from Americans all over this country, that we've got to stop the spending. Now yield back. And the gentleman yields back. The clerk will read. Page 86, line 8, Public Housing Operating Fund, $4,524,000,000. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia rise? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. If the gentleman could specify which amendment. Um, Madam Chairman, uh, it's uh, Amendment 162. I think I just the gave. clerk will report the amendment. The amendment offered by Mr. Brown of Georgia, page 86, line 12, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $562,150,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount insert increased by $562,150,000. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The underlying bill increases funding for the Public Housing Operating Fund by over $500 million from this year, from fiscal year 2012. My amendment would simply return the funding back to this year from the proposed levels. It's $500 million increase at a time when our nation is broke and American taxpayers are struggling to put food on their tables and looking for jobs. It is imperative that we look for common sense cuts wherever we can, and this is one of those. It's a lot of money, $500 million. Some would say it's a very small amount compared to the overall funding level proposed in this bill, but it's still $500 million. We just have to stop spending money that we don't have. I urge my colleagues to support this very simple amendment that would save over $500 million, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, I, I thank the uh, Madam Chairman, and uh, I move, uh, or I speak in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized. I thank uh, the Chairwoman. Uh, I do rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment. Uh, and this is an amendment that uh, on face value is uh, somewhat confusing, shall we say. And so while it appears that there is a large increase in this account, that when it says $562 million over last year, this uh, account is approximately level funded from last year because last year we went in and took $500 million out of reserve funds on the public housing authorities that were sitting there that were unexpended uh, balances. Those reserves are no longer there. And so what we're having to do in this bill basically to stay virtually even is to uh, have the uh, $562 million over last year. Uh, this fund provides many of the necessary operating and maintenance activities for our housing authorities, uh, including health, safety, and sanitation. Our funding levels for public housing build in savings from uh, reform proposals that we urge the authorizers to complete before we go to final conference in the bill. And, uh, and again, I don't know what, in this entire bill, whether you talk about the, the highway bill, uh, financial services doing uh, their work, but that is, would be extremely helpful if, in fact, we had authorizations uh, that would actually limit spending and that, uh, that we could follow. Uh, but again, I just want to reiterate, we used $500 million a year ago out of the funds that were available sitting there idle, and so what, in fact, this does is basically even from last year. Uh, while it appears to be a large increase, it in fact is not uh, because of the use of those funds from last year, the reserve funds. Uh, I believe we're providing a responsible level of funding for this program. And uh, I, again, I want to reiterate, Madam Chairman, that we uh, are cutting over about $4 billion in this bill, in this appropriation bill. Uh, I think the gentleman earlier mentioned that uh, the largest percentage cut of any bill so far on the floor uh, but this particular 
uh, issue, this particular amendment uh, would be extremely devastating because of the funding issues and the reserve account that we used last year. So with that, I would urge a no vote on the amendment. And the gentleman yield yields back. back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts I move to strike recognition? the last word. The gentleman is recognized. I'm not sure that I have anything much to add to what the, my chairman has, has said, other than to just point out, if you look back at the, uh, at the number of dollars that was assigned in for the fiscal year 11 bill, that was over $4.6 billion. And, uh, and so last year's, in, in 2012, the amount of money brought that down to under four four billion dollars, the five hundred plus billion dollars, a uh, million five hundred plus million dollars that uh, the gentleman from uh, Iowa had pointed out was part of reserves that were taken from those uh, those housing authorities around the country who had substantial reserves, and so that has been done. That was a one-shot kind of a deal. And now the uh, funding has to go back to something that is in the line of, uh, of, of yearly fundings going back a period of time, going back well into a decade uh, ago, that, uh, that we're on a different guide path. So this is just returning to that. It is at the President's request. It's below the amount that has been uh, award uh, given to this in the other body's uh, allocation. They had a large, larger allocation and their number for this particular account is well below ours. A, uh, it's uh, 70, 70 million or so dollars below what has been uh, provided by the chairman in the mark for this year. So I think this is entirely appropriate given the size of the, of the maintenance gaps and the need to keep maintaining your facility, your housing quality, uh, so that you don't end up losing that or ending up with much higher expense for replacement. I, I urge a no vote on the amendment. The gentleman uh, yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is Madam not chair. agreed to. The gentleman from Georgia. I ask for a recorded vote, please, ma'am. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 86, line 20. Native American Housing Block Grant, $650 million to remain available until September 30th, 2017. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Hawaii seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Ms. Hanabusa of Hawaii, page 88, after line 2, insert the following. Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant, including transfer of funds. For the Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant Program as authorized under Title VIII of the Native American Housing Assistance and Self-Determination Act of 1996, $13 million to remain available until expended, which amount shall be derived from, by transfer from the amount provided in this title under Management and Administration, Administration Operations and Management for the, for the Office of the Chief Human Capital Officer. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, I reserve a point of order on the gentlewoman's amendment. A point of order is reserved. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Hawaii seek recognition? I, I would like to speak in support of the amendment. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield myself as much time as I may need. Without my, objection. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My amendment inserts the amount of $13 million for the Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant. This is in line with the President's budget. The President provided for the same amount and states that the Native Hawaiian Block Grant is authorized under Title VIII of the Native American Housing Assistance and Self-Determination Act of 1996, easier to call NAHASDA. The block grant authorizes an annual grant to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands for housing and housing-related assistance. 
Madam Speaker, let us understand the significance of this block grant to this Congress and the nation. In 1921, the Congress passed into law the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Congress recognized that it was necessary to return Native Hawaiians to their land to support self-sufficiency, the preservation of their values, traditions, and culture. Madam Speaker, at the time, 1893, where the Queen was overthrown, you know, Hawaii was a vibrant, modern nation. And what happened after the overthrow resulted in the need, and Congress saw the need, that we needed to look at the return of Native Hawaiians to their land. In essence, a trust relationship was created by the creation of the Hawaiian Homes Comm Commission Act. The Hawaiian Homes Commission Act made very clear that only Hawaiians of 50% blood quantum qualified, that the lands could only be leased, not owned, and it also restricted the ability to mortgage and had occupancy restrictions as well. This block grant assists in fulfilling the special trust relationship which was created and acknowledged in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. It ensures the return to the land of Native Hawaiians, which was the concern of Congress. It, if this provision is authorized and, and, and people vote for it, what it will do is it will permit the existing and ongoing projects, along with those planned, to be completed with the ultimate goal of putting Native Hawaiians on the land, which was the purpose of the trust relationship that we created in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act of 1921. Madam Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back the balance of her time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, I make a point of order against the amendment because it provides an appropriation for an unauthorized program and therefore violates Clause 2 of Rule 21. Clause 2 of Rule 21 states in pertinent part, an appropriation may not be in order as an amendment for an expenditure not previously authorized by law. Madam Chairman, the amendment proposes to appropriate funds for a program that has not been authorized. The amendment therefore violates Clause 2 of Rule 21 and I ask for a ruling of the Chair. Does any member seek recognition to be heard on the point of order? Madam Speaker, I seek The gentlelady is recognized. Madam Speaker, I understand the point of order that has been raised, but let me, um, with all due respect, say that when we look at the language of any rule, the rules, the language that is, I guess, the suspect here is not previously authorized by law. In fact, as stated by the President, as well as in my amendment, this provision has been authorized by law, and it is found in Nahazda, Title VIII. Well, we look at the wording not previously authorized, the technical agree, our argument may be that it was authorized at some point in time and then expired in 2005. However, that is not what the rule says. The rule says not previously authorized, and this has been previously authorized. In the recent United States Supreme Court case of Lamey versus U.S. Trustee, it's very clear, and we can borrow from the Supreme Court when it gives its, its opinion as to what it means. The plain language is what controls in any interpretation of any statute or any rule. It is clearly plain language that what is being referred to here is, is the fact that it was not previously authorized and it has been previously authorized. In addition to that, I would also like to say that there is an exception to this rule that says that you can continue appropriations for public works and objects that are already in progress. And to that, Madam Speaker, I point out that as we have said, this money is used for the return of the Native Hawaiians to the lands, and it includes, of course, construction and public works. There are projects ongoing that need this money in Kakaina, Waimanalo, P.E. Lani Mai Keka, Phase 2 in Anahola on the island of Kauai, in Laopua on the, island, on the Big Island in the Kona side, Lalamilo in Waimea, Kanehili in Kapole, and East Kapole 2 also in Kapole, Kapole being on the island of Oahu. So on this point of order, Madam Speaker, I believe that it has been misinterpreted, 
the words are not previously authorized and in addition to that and this and this specific provision has been authorized and in addition to that the exception is for public works projects in progress and the public works projects are the ones that I have listed which as we know is the object of the grant of the Hawaii, Native Hawaiian Housing Block Grant. Thank you Madam Speaker. Lady yields back. Do any other members wish uh, to seek time in uh, uh, Madam Chairman. on the point of order? And from Iowa's uh, Yeah, I will insist on my point of order. The fact of the matter is this program is not currently authorized. There are on, no ongoing public works uh, in progress. And uh, so, uh, once again, I would insist on my point of order. The gentleman yields back. The proponent of an item of appropriation carries the burden of persuasion on the question whether it is supported by an authorization in law. Having reviewed the amendment and entertained arguments on the point of order, the chair is unable to conclude that the item of appropriation in question is authorized by law. An authorization that has lapsed does not qualify under the rule. The chair is therefore constrained to sustain the point of order under Clause 2A of Rule 21. The amendment is not in order. The clerk will read. Page 88, line 3, Indian Housing Loan Guarantee Fund Program Account, $6 million. Community Planning and Development Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS, $330 million dollars to remain available until September 30th, 2014. Community Development Fund, $3,404,000,000 to remain available until September 30th, 2015. For what purpose does the gentleman from Utah seek recognition? I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. Chaffetz of Utah. Page 89, line 13, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $396 million. Page 89, line 15, after the dollar amount insert reduced by $396 million. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount insert increased by $396 million. The gentleman from Utah is recognized to explain his amendment. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I first want to applaud and, uh, and thank uh, the committee uh, for their work. Uh, they've reached the uh, laudable goal of, uh, of reducing the overall expenditures by $4 billion, and that is, that is much appreciated and noted. I just happen to think we can do just a little bit better. Uh, I, I'm looking at the committee report, uh, page eight, about, uh, regarding the uh, uh, committee recommendations on the community development fund, specifically the community development block grants. Uh, and I read, quote, this is $396 million above both fiscal year 2012 and the budget request. So you have the president making a budget request, and you have last year's expenditures. What this amendment does is reduces by $396 million to get it back to where we were again. I think the president is even also on the same page. Now, I, I, Madam Chair, I just, we have to recognize what a dire financial strait we're in in this country. Uh, we have to understand that we have a multi-trillion dollar challenge. Now, we talk about trillion with a capital T, and it's hard to get your arms around that. But if you were to spend a million dollars a day, every day, it would take you almost 3,000 years to get to one trillion. One trillion. So when we're at racking up a trillion plus dollar deficit each year, when our national debt at the end of this year will approach 16 trillion dollars, when we're spending more than 600 million dollars a day in interest on our national debt, we're going to have to cut some spending. So to, bring, to re actually bring back and reduce this to the proper level, I think would be nor appropriate. I encourage my colleagues to, to support this amendment. It returns the funding to fiscal year 2011. Again, as the committee report says, this is $396 million above both fiscal year 2012 and the budget request. I think this is reasonable. I hope the committee would find uh, a, a place where we could join us, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts seek uh, recognition? Madam Chair, when I claim time in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, Madam Chairman, this is, uh, this, is a, uh, this is an amendment that, uh, that would take a huge chunk out of the CDBG program. This is one of the areas in which I have been particularly 
uh, uh, commendable, I thought most commendable about what the, uh, the chairman's mark is in the bill for this, uh, uh, f for the uh, CDBG. Um, the CDBG is a hugely popular program in communities around the country. We have, we have as I have uh, mentioned in my opening remarks at the beginning of this bill, we have 65 percent of our population living in communities in metropolitan areas with over half a million people, and close to 90 percent of our people live in communities in communities with over 50,000 people. It's roughly around 50,000 people that are entitlement communities and get an amount of money that they may use in a flexible kind of a way in, in their um, uh, cities, cities and towns of large size can directly get that money uh, to use for, uh, in a flexible way for things that, that they uh, need in their cities. Our cities and towns have suffered uh, greatly in the Great Recession that we have had uh, before us, and uh, they have housing needs which are very substantial. Now, I would point out to the gentleman from Utah that the, uh, that the amount for the CDBG program is, as proposed by Chairman Latham, that I am commending him for and strongly support uh, his uh, allocation for this, uh, the amount that he has provided in this bill within the allocation and with the $4 billion reduction that the bill entails, that this amount is below the number that CDBG was given all the way back in 2008. It has varied up and down depending upon the allocations and depending upon what's gone on, but this one still is below and, uh, and I strongly support it would urge it that it be uh, that it be maintained it provides because so a considerable amount goes into not in every place it's the, the it's flexible monies that the cities or towns the large cities or towns and by the way about 20 percent of the whole amount gets it goes directly to states which then can use it in a discretionary way in groups of smaller communities, so it actually gets into rural areas and small communities in communities like, uh, like those of the chairman of the Appropriations Committee who, whose district has no community larger than about 15,000 people. But his, his district manages to get a considerable amount of money through the state of Kentucky for the, that congressional district. So it's something that goes to everybody in their districts in a flexible way for things that, can, uh, that are eligible under the, uh, under the law. But when it's being used for the de development of housing, then it ends up clearly, directly providing for jobs. If it's used in the, in the way of, uh, of social services through nonprofit organizations, again, it is it is providing jobs for people who are doing great service for our population. So I'm a strong supporter of this. I think that uh, I, I certainly urge that uh, the amendment be defeated, and I will stop there because other people have uh, wished to speak. The Thank gentleman uh, yields back the balance of his time. For what purpose does the uh Gentleman from North Carolina seek recognition. Madam Chairman, I move to strike the last words. The gentleman is recognized. I uh, rise in strong opposition to this amendment, and I will, uh, I will also uh, be brief because I know uh, <clears throat> we have uh, many more amendments to consider. But I, I really do want to focus on this one because I think this, this, this proposal to uh, cut the CDBG program, the Community Development Block Grant Program, by $396 billion is particularly uh, ill-advised. And I suspect members on both sides of the aisle will, uh, will understand that and, and will agree with that. We're all, after all, hearing from our mayors, from our local communities, from people who know over the years, first of all, that this program has been 
much better funded in past years, that even with this um, increase for which we commend the, uh, the chairman in the current bill, even with that, the, uh, the funding is much less than could be utilized. We also know that the CDBG program has some, uh, has some very uh, strong virtues. One of them is flexibility, community self-determination in terms of how this money is spent and how is it applied. Uh, the kind of leverage that this money represents for bringing forth participation and funding from other sources. This is a program that has stood the test of time, that has strong bipartisan support uh, in this chamber and across the country. So uh, I think the notion that we would cut back this appropriation by hundreds of millions of dollars is, uh, is most unwise, and I urge defeat of the amendment. The gentleman yield back. Uh, yields back the balance of his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Uh, I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the uh, chairwoman, and uh, I rise in opposition to the amendment. Uh, the Community Development Block Grant Program is very important to cities and states throughout the country. Uh, there is a great deal of local control in this program. Communities use the, uh, the block grants to meet local needs such as building water and sewer infrastructure, community centers, housing for low-income families, and uh, other development important to their local communities. Uh, although the bill increases the funding, uh, this funding level is still well below what it was in fiscal year 2010, uh, which then was $1 billion. The bill actually is $46 million below that level in 2010, to be exact. Uh, Madam Chairman, this uh, uh, bill, as we were going through it, we had many members, both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, request uh, additional funding for these grants. Uh, for many members, uh, there is a strong uh, constituent support for these programs. Uh, and, you know, th we have seen individual cases of, it, of abuse, uh, not unlike a lot of other government programs. But really, the way to fix those reforms, and we're not going to do it through the appropriation process, is through the authorizers uh, and to have them do their work to make sure that these programs are well run, that they're focused, and that they actually do what the intention is. So uh, again, I want everybody to understand that we are actually below fiscal year 2010 levels on uh, a very, very important uh, uh, program, and uh, I would uh, recommend and urge a no vote. I yield back. The, the gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from uh, Utah. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the no's Madam have chair? it. The amendment is not agreed to. For what purpose does the uh, gentleman from California seek On that, I ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Utah will be postponed. The clerk will read. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Uh, Madam Chairman, I have an uh, amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. McClintock of California, page 89, line 13, after the dollar amount, insert reduced to zero dollars. Page 89, line 15, after the dollar amount, insert reduced to zero dollars. Page 89, line 24, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $60 million. Page 90, line 2, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $3,960,000. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $3,404,000. The gentleman from California is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this amendment uh, finishes the good work begun by the gentleman from Utah on the previous amendment. Uh, it saves $3.4 billion by eliminating all funding for the Community Development Block Grant Program. This program was created in 1974 with the stated objective of eliminating blight and providing affordable housing. But in the nearly four decades since then, it has degenerated into a federal slush fund for pet projects of local politicians and politically connected businesses. It is plagued by profligate waste and outright fraud. This is an unauthorized expenditure. 
The legal authority for it expired back in 1994, 18 years ago, and Congress has not bothered to renew it ever since. But we keep shoveling money at it year after year. Three and a half billion dollars averages to almost fifty dollars from the earnings of a family of four, and they have a right to know where their fifty dollars taken from their family budgets is going. Now, Senator Coburn gave some examples in his Back to Black report. Summit County, Ohio spent hundred thousand dollars of CDBG funds to create a doggy daycare in Kennel last year and Nyack, New York, directed $10,000 of CDBG funds to Amazing Grace Circus Incorporated in 2009 to put on a day at the circus. CDBG funds are being spent creating a hip atmosphere for employees of an L.A. architectural firm, providing decorative sidewalks in a wealthy Virginia community, and upgrading Victorian cottages in Alabama. Indeed, some communities use these funds to pay off federal loans they've taken out on projects that are now defaulting because they've utterly failed to produce all of the benefits they promised. Now, even in the best of circumstances, these are all projects that exclusively benefit local communities or private interests and ought to be paid for exclusively by those local communities or private interests. They are of such questionable merit that no city council is willing to face its constituents and say, this is how we have spent your local taxes, but they are more than happy to spend somebody else's federal taxes, so we end up robbing St. Petersburg to pay St. Paul for projects so dubious that the purported beneficiaries won't pay for them. And that's all before we discuss the realm of fraud. This program is replete with individuals directing six-figure sums to their personal bank accounts or political activities. The Office of Management and Budget has repeatedly branded this program as ineffective. That's its official designation for government programs that cannot ascertain how their funds are spent. HUD's own Inspector General found that in a relatively short two-year time span, over 150 criminal indictments were issued for false claims, bribery, fraudulent contracts, theft, embezzlement, or corruption in connection with this program. This is a slush fund that cries for abolition, and it should be one of the very first places we look to bring spending under control and stop wasting our constituents' money. Once again, though, this unauthorized program is not targeted for elimination by the Appropriations Committee. It is not even targeted for a token reduction in spending. As we just discussed, the Appropriations Committee proposes spending $400 million more than we spent last year. Indeed, $400 million more than even the President requested. Now, let's be very clear on this. The House Appropriations Committee, with a Republican majority that has a clear mandate to stop wasting money, is about to appropriate $400 million more than requested by the most spendthrift administration in our nation's history on a program with no federal nexus, with a solid history of fraud, and that funds the most unworthy of local projects and special interest handouts. The rules of the House were specifically written to prevent this type of unauthorized expenditure, and they provide for a point of order to be raised if it's included in an appropriations bill. That is exactly what we have here. But alas, that rule is routinely waived when these measures are brought to the floor, making this amendment necessary. Madam Chairwoman, this is another critical test of the Republican majority's intention to stand by the promises it made to the American people in the most dangerous fiscal crisis in our nation's history. I pray that we rise to the occasion, and I yield back. Yields back. For what purposes does the gentleman from North Carolina rise? Mr. Chairman, I claim the time in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I believe with the offering of this amendment, we, uh, we're in great need of a, of a reality check in this uh, chamber. After all, it was President Nixon. It was a strong bipartisan majority with Republicans playing uh, a leading role that first initiated the community development block grant programs. 
And I assume that uh, this amendment will be rejected today by that same kind of uh, bipartisan uh, coalition. The whole idea of the CDBG program was to get away from inflexible, one-size-fits-all approaches to urban development. The whole idea was to get away from top-down bureaucratic operations. CDBG was designed to empower communities, to give them flexibility, to maximize the possibility for leverage of private sector funds, to let the, determine, the community determine its own projects and its own priorities. All of us have experience with this program, I dare say. And uh, my experience has been that the bang for the buck from CDBG is virtually unmatched in any other federal program. Housing rehabilitation, for example, one of the main uses in many communities of CDBG funds. What you're doing with housing rehabilitation is not building public housing from scratch. You're not totally furnishing uh, new, new neighborhoods, but you're taking houses that are likely to deteriorate where a small investment, a relatively small investment, can rehab those houses, can salvage those housing, houses, and can, and can make quality housing available to the community. Another, another major use of CDBG funds is, uh, is infrastructure. How many Habitat for Humanity uh, communities have been built across our country with the CDBG funds furnishing the basic uh, infrastructure? And, uh, and then from there on, uh, the volunteer efforts uh, take off. Uh, the, the gentleman sponsoring this amendment made the incredible statement that these are projects that communities wouldn't undertake on their own. On the contrary, no CDBG project is going to be undertaken without community participation, financial and otherwise, without community self-determination that this is a priority. So there's a kind of air of unreality about this debate. These are programs that maximize the values that um, many of our colleagues uh, profess, self-determination, flexibility, leveraging of private funds. They're, they're programs that have stood the test of time, and we in this bill should be proud to appropriate funds because we know these funds will have great multiplier effects throughout this country. So I very, very strongly urge colleagues to reject this amendment. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks time? What purpose does the gentleman from Iowa rise? 